Well, hello again everybody. Uh, it's a bank holiday today and I thought it's, le it's been a little while, so um, why not have a bank holiday rant? And this one is about uh, food and going out for food, eating out if you like. And um, yesterday uh, there was a little bit of a family do and we all ended up going out to this rather posh eating establishment, a local one that's a little bit sort of... Uh, I wouldn't say quite snobby, but uh, it's posh and you're meant to dress up and be on your best behaviour and all that sort of stuff. Um, that's not a problem. I can actually do that, believe it or not. Um, but anyway, we get there and it's all the car park is full of these big, posh, not all, but a lot of big, posh, top of the range cars, personal plates, all that sort of stuff. And uh, it's all... So we've got a little bit of a sort of stuffy atmosphere about it, or at least for me it has anyway. I'm, I'm, I'm down to earth and as common as muck me, actually. But uh, there we go. Anyway, we got into this place and uh, got ushered to our table, sat down, had a drink and had a look at the menu. And um, we were discussing whether or not we'd have starters or whether we'd just have main courses and desserts. And I decided that... I wanted a starter and a couple of the others did as well so we uh, asked to see the starters and much to my surprise and delight I saw something that's uh, there's, there's foods that are regarded as unfashionable believe it or not aren't there these days and uh, one such dish if you like is the starter the prawn cocktail well I was over the moon to see that uh, on the specials for starters there was a prawn cocktail oh great i'll have that i haven't had one in quite a while i like them nice big pile of prawns with the seafood sauce and the lettuce and everything lovely yeah that'll do great so i ordered a prawn cocktail and uh, we chatted and drank a bit and then the starters arrived for those that wanted them and instead of being sort of greeted or confronted with a large sort of wine glass type vessel with all the lettuce and maybe a bit of tomato and other things in it and a nice big pile of prawns and a sauce on top and perhaps a sprinkling of that brown stuff and some pieces of brown bread you know what came along i'm not kidding a dinner plate right a full-size dinner plate with about eight prawns on it done in three different ways you had i think there were two of them that were like uh in this sort of bread crummy battery like husk and I'm sure that they had their shells on them as well or part of them because they were quite crunchy and I ended up with something stuck in my mouth um, and they were spicy as well which uh, doesn't really sort of work with prawns um, there were two tiny little cupcake like things made out of um, the stuff you get in Chinese takeaways the crispy prawn crackers little cupcakes made out of that stuff with about three prawns with some sauce on in each and um, there were another two that to be honest I can't even remember and all this lot was sort of contained within this little pile of stuff that looked like someone had already eaten it once made out of lentils and things I think it was and that was like a rather unpleasant mush as well and that wasn't a prawn cocktail but and there was let's not forget the stuff drizzled around on a plate whatever that might have been as well that is not my idea of a prawn cocktail now i don't care how posh or wealthy anybody is that is taking the piss now what i expected and what i got were two totally different things and i'll tell you what there must be a huge profit margin on say a five or six pound bag of frozen prawns there if they're only giving people about eight each come on folks I mean I know there's profit margins and overheads and things but don't take the piss anyway that was rather disappointing on to the main course and uh, I thought there was going to be somewhat of an improvement there and there was to be fair and I had a nice roast lamb dinner except the lamb the amount of lamb that I got was sort of probably what I'd expect a child's portion to contain um, as it happens my wife did rather better than me for the amount of lamb she got and it was too much for her so she helped me out and uh, everything was all right there but I mean 
vegetables, to where mountains of the bloody things. They even brought, the waiters and waitresses even brought more, ve would you like more vegetables? Would you like more of this? Would you, um, I'd like some more meat, please. Oh, no, we can't do that. Um, and also, the other thing was, I noticed, there was a dire lack of gravy. We had to ask three times between all of us, there was probably, I think, about ten of us, uh, three times we had extra gravy brought around. Now, come on, I mean, how much does it cost to make a boat or a pot of gravy, for God's sakes? If I was running an establishment like that, I would be far more generous with the prawns, far more generous with the meat, or a little more generous with the meat, definitely, and the gravy, you could swim in the stuff that I'd give you. But I mean, gravy doesn't cost much money. It wouldn't have cost the earth to put another slice or even two of meat on the plate. And I mean, as for the prawns, come on, you, you're probably going to get a second mortgage on uh, the profit that you're making out of those, aren't you? And um, just in case anybody's wondering, I do actually know how to cook a decent meal and uh, can and do do so quite uh, frequently and especially around Christmas time. I've got no problem. I know how to make food and cook food and everything, but occasionally you want to go out and have it done by somebody else and not have to deal with the work and the washing up and so on. And um, I just really, I'm just looking, I have actually, I rarely do this, but I made a little list because I wanted to make absolutely sure that I got all my points across on this one. And I just, I'm not disgusted or anything like that, but I just wonder what they're playing at. And is this all just to sort of be trendy and the in thing where you get a big plate with a little dollop of something in the middle and stuff drizzled. Oh yes, the chef's been artistic today. Well, I can do artistic if I want, but I'm more interested in getting a good meal inside me. And more importantly than that, value for money. And I'm sure there must be an opening for an eating establishment to do something like that. And just to round off, I was once again over the moon when, the, uh, when we looked at the desserts menu and uh, guess what the special was. And that really sort of made amends for me, if you like, but I couldn't believe it. And hats off to them for this one. You could actually have a prawn, uh, not a prawn cocktail, sorry, that was a start. You could actually have Black Forest Gatto. Now, Black Forest Gatto and prawn cocktails are supposed to be from the 80s. But apparently, I can't get my head around this unfashionable food. I mean, when did food become fashionable or unfashionable? You either like the stuff or you don't, and that's the end of it, really. But I thought, ah, right, okay, going by uh, the prawn cocktail, I suppose I'm going to get a little cube of gatto and I'll probably have some little decorative thing on it and uh, stuff drizzled around on a big plate again. But much to my amazement and surprise and even delight, there was actually a generous helping of that and there was lots of cream on it and everything. And all that was fine, but I mean, just for a few, the sake of a few little details, that eating experience could have been a whole lot better and a whole lot more enjoyable than it was. So come on, folks, with eating establishments. You're not all doing it, I know, but some of you, you really need to get your heads around the fact that uh, at the end of the day, the bottom line is people want something to eat. They're not interested in all your arty-farty prancing around and how you carry the plates and how you drizzle this stuff on the food. Pile it up, get it out there, let people eat and be merry.